So as the field now begins to circulate behind the pace cars, here's our race analysis for the 500 with the 250 lap distance and the amazing speeds. Fuel stops, quick start at 37, could start earlier. Well, I certainly think the case. Was... They blew a motor big time on Friday, had gearbox problems yesterday, had gearbox problems again this morning. If you're DeFerrin, you're wondering if he's had those problems and I'm in an identically prepared car for the team, am I going to have problems? And we give you a final look at the starting grid. And the arrowheads indicated those contenders in the field. Let's go to Jan. But is it going to be good or what? DeFerrin, the pole sitter track record, plays this track. They pick up the speed as they come off of four. The front row, DeFerrin and Andretti already taking a look toward the green flag. Green flag is out. DeFerrin jumps to the lead, and here we go. Castro Nevis moves very, very high. He's been there most of the week down low. It's Montoya that takes a look at second place to battle with Castro Nevis. The two Newman Haas cars drop back Fittipaldi and Michael Andretti and go side by side coming off the corner. Castro Nevis now looks for the lead. Is his job here today to play the rabbit to DeFerrin? I would think so. I mean, the drivers that have been around 500 mile races know you've got to back off right from the start, conserve the car, try to get the fuel mileage. I'm surprised to see the two Penske teammates oh. already fighting for the lead. Yeah, why would you fight at all if you're DeFerrin? Nevertheless, he is as DeFerrin goes back for the lead at the 500. Back for the lead. I'm a little surprised to see DeFerrin on the point so early battling side by side with his teammate. And of course, Michael Andretti just can't be denied. He has to run at the front. I would think drivers like Vassar, Breck, even farther back, Fernandez, they don't want to lose contact with the lead group, but as long as they don't go a lap down. But there are some other possibilities, of course, depending on who else falls out and wins. But I would, who else falls out and falls by the wayside, I would think that DeFerrin wouldn't want to be running up there. We're going to look at, at the line speeds here as DeFerrin crosses the line again in the lead. Here is Paul Tracy and Kenny Breck, two of the contenders. They battle one another, but last time around it was Christian Fittipaldi that turned the quickest lap. 16. Yeah, it's, it's actually doing exactly what he wanted. He's not fighting for anything right now. In fact, what DeFerrin's doing is playing into DeFerrin's hand. Their mileage as you can. If you're running up front, you maybe two miles to the gallon. If you're in somebody's toe, you're going to get about 2.2 or 2.4 miles to the gallon. You can get a little bit your last year. Well, Kenny Breck and Paul Tracy continue to go side by side for eighth place, while DeFerrin now seems to have grasped the lead a little bit, the three tenths of a second. Now, as we watch this Penske team with Michael and Chase, it makes me grab the position away from Montoya. Michael Andretti, who was battling for the front, has dropped back 19 of them already into the record book. Green from the word go. Nice, smooth start. And the Penske last year, the fastest lap of the race was only 230. And that was near the end. I think it's because we have absolutely ideal conditions today for fast speeds. And if they're running 232 now, I'd say add another five to that when they really want to get with it. Now they're averaging 228.6 miles an hour. And because of that speed, now the leaders are bidding, beginning to encounter some of the slower cars in the field. The first one that they encountered with Senji Nakano and now Alex Barron gets overhauled by first and second to Farron and Castro Nevis and by Dario Franchitti, Rick DeBrule. Just one update the situation. Adrian at Nath and that whole crew there tracking that car. They'll, they'll get it back where they need it by the end of the 500 miles. Look at this little fight, though, as they all come up trying to get around Alex Barron. Takes it back now. Here comes Tracy and Christian Fittipaldi as they split Alex Barron. It's so easy on the super speedway. You can be running laps of 228, 230. You come up on slow traffic, you have to get out of the throttle if you can't use that momentum to get by. And once, once you've lost that momentum, it takes a while to come back. Sometimes you have to come completely out of the throttle, get back behind the guy, pick up the toe, and then take another stab at it. You've got to plan the pass exactly right in order to take advantage of your superior speed. Here's ninth place, Jimmy Vassar. You saw Kenny Breck go low as the yellow comes on. And Parker takes a good look to search the track. Yeah, we can see debris up in turn four. Actually, oh, in the car. accident in turn four, but the accident came after the yellow. And it looks to be Cristiano D'Amata. And Paul, I thought from Vassar's onboard, we actually saw debris come up and over the car as we saw the yellow come on. I thought I something flick across the nose there. 
And part of the problem may be that Paul Tracy has damage. Looking like the whole cowling came off the car. Now, is that damaged, or did that just rip away? Well, it looks like it's missing the plenum to me, Paul. The whole top of the intake stack is gone. There's oh, no, no. pop-off valve. We've seen this a number of times with the Hondas in the past. They get a plenum fire. It explodes and blows the whole top of the car off. Looking from Cristiano's onboard. Coming down through turn three, you can see the debris. He runs over something. You can hear it on the onboard audio. Snaps him right up into the wall. So I have to believe there, oh, there you see the is. plenum explosion off the back of Paul Tracy's car. That was the debris we saw earlier from Jimmy Vassar's and, uh, onboard. Since everybody was talking about their picks back at the start of the season. Violations as now the Bensley cars peel off. Castro Nevis goes to his box. The Farron goes to his box. Now Franchini is arriving at his box. We watch all three teams in action. We're keeping the closest eye on DeFerrin since the championship was in big for him. All right, Castro Nevis broke. No problem for Castro Nevis. So now DeFerrin gets by, and the rest of the field goes by. Problem for Castro Nevis. And Franchini, I think he's done it. Montoya may have got him. Franchini is either first or second. What an awesome stop for Team Green. Well, in the battle of the pit stop. And he has just called for the red flag. Now, it's interesting, Jan Vikas, it is interesting to me because just about the time they were reaching for the flag, you said that it stopped. Yeah, and that is curious to me because normally I would think you don't red flag it until the track gets shiny. In other words, when you actually have moisture that is more than just a spit like we have right now. So, like you said, the second that Jim Swintel reached for that red flag, it stopped down here on pit road. Maybe they should have waited a lap or two. So they aren't going to stop this entire field. And just but off to the west side of the track, there it is, as you look over toward Ontario and up in California and look at the whole mountain range in Mount Baldy, it's just coming closer and closer. And it looks to me, Parker, too, like it's right down ground level. If it's not going to be rain, it might be fog. Well, but they had a number of drivers complaining on the radio that the race should be stopped. Obviously, the Chief, Chief Stewart takes that into account. We've got to use a little bit of forethought here, though, because if this clears up, you could go right back to green in just a few laps. Because once they bring these cars in, as you know, it takes a long time to get this thing restarted. And I'm ready for the continuation of the 500. Here is the full field summary. They have released the cars from behind the pace car to come up to a reasonable speed, but they are still under the yellow flag and the race recap as we look at it to this point in the action thus far and of course has Montoya as the leader of the run and an incredible average at 230 miles an hour that of course is the green flag average and the key there is Paul Tracy is out on board cameras for him got plenty of them on board with Mauricio Guzman and, of course, Mark Blundell. We always have a camera with Mark. He's driving his last race for PacWest. We hope he can find a ride for next year. And then Jimmy Vassar's got an on board. He's up in the fifth position right now. His teammate, Montoya, of course, is leading the race. Now, with an overnight chance of everybody to talk, Parker, can't be without controversy. Well, we dove into the rule book because, of course, we thought that, you, of course, as a rule book states, you can make whatever repairs you want to in the pit box during the course of the rent. But this rule says that if the race is restarted on another day, a replacement race car and the driver may be allowed at the discretion of the chief steward. But some controversy has come up over this rule. Isn't that right, Jan? Yeah, it has, Barker, and that's because the initial part of that Montoya, rule... Montoya, Frankiti tucked in close behind him. Green flag comes out. The 500 is on once again as Michael Andretti comes screaming down alongside of Franchini and grabs second place. Michael then goes outside of Montoya and Michael Andretti picks up the lead of the race. Yeah, it looked like Michael was shot out of a cannon there. Keep in mind, you mentioned the track conditions are different. All the rubber's been washed off with the rain. The track and air temperature is the highest. Goes high on DeFerrin. and Max Pappas closes in behind. Now, logically, Matt, Max can help his teammate if he wants to line up with him and help clean up the air, give him a little more speed in the track. Tracy had the plenum explosion yesterday. Now, Breck, look at that. Wow, Breck is just hauling. This is what we were talking about at the opening of the show, is that Kenny was not happy with the way... That's the spotters talking to the drivers, telling them who's around them. You heard he had someone for the pit stop, but they were comfortable. Once he got back out there, it was going to work. And guess what? They're right. This was.
Kenny Breck when he made his move. Catches the draft. Goodbye. Makes it absolutely perfect. Uh -oh. Goes to the outside of Jimmy going to the There's Fernandez. That's Jill DeFerrin just ahead of him. Almost made it look Passer. easy. Appears to be out, Jan. Yeah, the report from the team is he has had gearbox failure, Paul. Well, and there is one of the other big questions, the gearboxes. Well, we've seen the Renards have been fragile all year long. The, the crew was asking, what about a push? Do you have a push? He said, no, the car's feeling just great. Obviously, it's running fine. The question is, will it run the same on the next set of tires? We look around, they do a quick change on the left front wing, and they get them back out. Race of the year. Remember that great duel that he had with Michael Andretti at Michigan? Of course, he won the Indianapolis 500 with his speed, then coming all the way down to the end of the pits. Sliding into his spot a little bit there as Montoya didn't really hit it cleanly, but he is on the proper spot. Oh, and we saw on the front straightaway. Something go behind you, you bet, Gary. That was Mimo Gidley, I think. Gidley slows, pulls it down off the line over in the first turn, and they go to yellow. They also put the course condition flag out for possible oil on the front straight, and the pits are now closed, but that really shouldn't matter for anyone. Into the pit out area. And one of the things that makes this particularly sad is the fact that uh, Mimo Gidley probably will once again, really excellent driver, be looking for a ride because it appears that John De La Pena and his team will not be back in this competition next year. Though I think they're still hoping for something, but they seem fairly pessimistic. Jimmy Vassar out of the race. He's looking for a ride for next year too, Gary. Well, here's a man who knows what it's like to win one of these big things. That's what the team wanted or what they wanted or didn't want. Ready to go green once again. 85 laps complete. Montoya takes him to the green, but Pappas wants the lead. Pappas comes inside of Montoya. Andretti is sitting in third. That's Castro. He said he'd like to have a perfect win here to bookend his season. Back behind Montoya, Andretti, Castro Nevis, and now Tony Kanan sticks his nose into the fight. Christian Fittipaldi is also there, Rick DeBrule. Just want to mention, we mentioned the fact that, that Kenny Breck was having problems with his dash. He's also having bigger telemetry problems now. What they're doing is they're using Max Pappas' telemetry to figure out what to do with Kenny because they just don't have enough information coming in from his car. That's okay if they're together on the track, but the more they spread apart, that information isn't going to hold. Tony Kanan has an engine go. Kanan has one let go. And looks like it's going to cause some serious trouble. Cars behind him as the oil sprayed out of that engine and let's see who's involved well there's Oriel Servia heavy damage to that car but he's moving around thank goodness it appears that he's okay boy that's no time to have an engine go in it it looked like Michael Andretti I haven't been able to confirm that yet but that's just what it looks like whoa oh you can hear the debris oh, boy. From the onboard audio, 40 plus miles an hour on the way in. See one of the Penske cars that has to be DeFerrin going by on the right side of Blundell, and it is Michael Andretti that was involved early. Michael Andretti was up alongside one of the Penske cars. I only got a, a glimpse from behind at it, so I don't want to tell you it is. It, it certainly doesn't appear to have affected either Castro Nevis or uh, our DeFerrin, and I, I would assume that it was DeFerrin that he was up alongside, but we go once uh, again. Alex Barron leads him down. Moreno's actually the leader of the race. And he's going to run in track. You see that? About five wide going into one. Whoa! Montoya down low. Castro Nevis up. Down first, and anybody had anticipated here, it may not affect his run that much. And if you followed all that and can pass the test, then you qualify for three minutes of credit in Aerodynamics 101. <laughs> Thank you, Park. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. It was great. Man, I'm writing as fast as I can down here. I'm not sure I got all those. Will there be notes available at the yeah, end of the Yeah, there's cliff notes at the end of the race, Gary. No problem. And my fraternity has files. So. Pappas now has the lead of the run. Catherine Nevis is there in second. 110 yeah, Kenny Breck that are battling for a championship. And speaking of Breck, here he comes up to the inside alongside Castro Nevis. And you talk championship, outside, Kenny Breck. Outside, outside, <laughs> outside. <laughs> Clear. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it, there's something we, 
second delay on the audio, so don't blame the spotters for being late. Unable to take that advantage of that draft to make a move past these front two. Now remember, too, in Kenny Breck's scenario for a championship, he needs to lead the most laps, and this kind of run is costing him dearly. Jan? Well, you're talking about Castro Neves and that high line. And yellow, yellow just pump. came up. Yep, got another engine going, and it's Sinji Nakano this time. And this one involves an awful lot of fire at the back end. You were talking about those Jado boosters. That's, that's what they would look like, only in this case it's slowing the car down. So we'll, we'll pull the yellow flag once again and slow the field down. I was going to suggest... Yeah, see Mercedes, Toyota, and Hondas go. It's <laughs> Shinji Nakano and Walker Racing's version of the Batmobile. Well, they call him Jimmy the Rocket. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you are. Jan Bikas. Yeah, we were talking about the line of Castro Neves, and he runs that high line like Parker was talking about. Castro Neves, we're focusing on. Castro Neves was the leader. Pappas is into his pit. It looks like they're going to go fuel only for both of the Ray Hall cars. They're both away and rolling. Gary Gerald. They do change tires for Castro Neves, and they fuel him. He leaves just over 11 seconds. Oh, close call there as he eluded the trooper. Bit of Paldy. No problem, however. And Jill DeFerrin also stopped at this point. And Scott Remke down at the Ray Hall Pitts runs that car for Kenny Breck. Does the strategy, and I bet the cogs and wheels are spinning in his mind trying to figure out what to do here. Sitting back there is Mark Blundell, currently fifth. Jan Bikas? Yeah, great run for Mark Blundell, and consider that yesterday he thought his day was done. He was walking down the pit road shaking people's hands as though that was his last time in the car. But because of the overnight red flag, they found a way to fix what they perceived to be an oil leak, and now he gets a second shot at it. At Rose's restaurant last night, <laughs> carbo loading on the, pa on the pasta there, uh, but Mark looked particularly uh, relaxed as he was talking with his longtime friend and neighbor in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona, their Harley Clutchin, so they were... They were just nice and easy, and it's paying off here today. Boy, look at that. They split the leader again, and Blundell is in this fight. Again, Breck is a guy that's got a problem trying to get up at the front and lead these laps. Blundell's teammate, Mauricio Guzman, is out of the run, and right now he's with Rick DeBruel as Kenny Breck. Oh, and looks like Blundell's got an oh, engine going. Mark, you're blowing. You're blowing. You get out of it. He's just oh, going to run it right oh, up oh, next oh, to the careful. wall. That's the only thing a driver can do. He couldn't cut back down on the track since he's running in his own oil. The best yeah, thing you could do. That is great. I mean, that pass you put on him was awesome. Just as he goes into the lead, the engine lets him down, but a great bit of driving by Mark Blundell. What a way to end his career here in kart, at least for now. now. Parker, as you said many times, they tend to go real fast just before they stop going whatsoever. <laughs> well, I keep thinking about the fact you just brought up with 14 cars running and 12 positions paying points. I agree with you. Pontier pull low, and off the course, he's going for a routine stop. You may have some gearbox problems we hear, Paul. Oh, yeah, they're at the back of the car now. as the field comes around. Did you see Tarso Marquez? He came off of that last Back in 10th place. It does not seem likely for Adrian Fernandez. Well, and the necessary fuel that we saw prior yellow, to this pits up. Whoa, whoa! Looks like Max Pappas. Pappas, I think you're right, Paul. Yep. Yellow came out. Something broken there. Well, it looks like the Paul, rear tires are very shiny. Then, and it's smoking there. Yep, you can see him yeah. down low there on the white line. Yahoo! Little Joey Chitwood action. Max showing off for the fans here. 
Wow. Wow, that was a great recovery. Christian Fittipaldi and Alex Agliani, I don't think, like that all that much, but there was nothing Max could do about it. Yeah. He did a beautiful we'll start with Gary Gerald. We talk so often about the pressure on the drivers with what's at stake. How about the pressure on these guys right now that are about to perform their miracles? They'll try to do it in 12 seconds. Rick, here's the Baron and Castro Nevis. How quickly strategies change. When they saw everybody else come in, they said, let's do the same thing. They're going to come in, top them off. A couple changes on the wing, they send them back out. He said the car wasn't working right. Gary? Well, there goes Moreno. There goes the Baron. The Penske cars have yet to move. Problem for Gilles de Baron. He stalled it. Now it catches. He's gone. Fortunately, it's under yellow, but he's still lost track position to the other front runners. And Gary for Montoya, eight seconds flat. Awesome stop for them. They took tires. They did not make a wing change, but I understand they did change. As he came back to green, the radio was alive with them telling the drivers, use as much fuel as you need. They're going to have to make one more stop unless this race slows down significantly because of a lot of yellow. Montoya comes low, Castro Nemes goes high. They come up alongside of Casey Mears. Montoya takes second away from Mears. Mears goes low, Castro Nemes high. Castro Nemes to third, now they chase Alex Barron. Both Montoya and Castro Nemes look for the front. Just hasn't hit the right brakes at the right time, but right now he's running very, very strong. He's got a championship. Oh, oh man. Castro Nevis had so much momentum in the green light like to go. Well, the record number of lead changes, 62 at the 98 Michigan 500. There were 52 this year at Michigan. And as Jordan closes in, been a 53 official lead changes. And now, four. <laughs> Look at that. Alex Barron back by Jordan. Oh. Jordan takes the lead for a moment, then Alex Barron comes out to the front. But you notice now... Oh, I just heard an engine go off. Was that Jordan's? We saw him just drop off the screen there. It looks like Mercedes-Benz may be going out of the series with a bang. Series, and sometimes we get callous about it. But look at this. Here's an embrace. Gilles DeFerrin has been... Uh, Gilles DeFerrin, I'm sorry. Michelle Jordan Jr. has been going around and, and being embraced by every member of the team. What did it feel like to be out there leading a 500-mile race that had a million-dollar payday at the end if you could stay there? I mean, it's so sad, you know, because, you know, since the beginning of the season, I mean, you know, with the accident of Tony, and, I mean, all this season, obviously, was for them, so Tony, Shirley, Ross, and Larry, and, I mean, I think, I mean, it's good, you know, to, I think we led the, the last lap of the season, and, I mean, I promise you, have the best car of the, in the racetrack, I mean. We salute you for battling. I know it's emotional, I know it's a tough time. It was great to see you up there with those leaders. Thanks, Ari. Thank you. Director Brill. Casey Mears came in, made a pit stop, flamed on his way out. A little extra fuel draft coming off the back side that caught fire. But you got to remember, before today, Casey never run pit stops. Montoya out there battling with Castro Neves. Check with the team. They're still in seventh gear for Montoya. And what they do is they downshift to sixth gear when they really want to pour the coals to it. So. Parker, I think you're correct. I think you've still got some in reserve here. And we were talking to Parker about Fernandez and turning up the wick, but him not going anywhere. But that can be horsepower. It also Montoya, Montoya, and that's going to bring out the yellow, and that's going to bring that's it into good. range for the pit. No, oh, it's changing again. Montoya has an engine go. The decision was that the field was just a little too spread out as they came off of four. They wanted a better restart than that. So Jim Smintel decided to give them the yellow flag. They didn't put the pace car out. The momentum picks up and we're ready to go to the green flag now. Patrick Racing guys, they're watching their boy Fernandez. As the green flag now flies. And Moreno to the inside of Castro Nevis as Fittipaldi got great momentum once again back to the flag and begins to disappear. Christian Fittipaldi hoodwinked these guys. He got them off throttle, then got back on at exactly the right time going down to turn three. But it looks now like Castro Nevis uh, had a pretty good year, but has not scored a victory since his a year ago at Road America at Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. Has announced... Oh, 
Big swoop. Oh, 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 this man. Castro Neves going into one, into two. The engine let go. He got in the oil. Backed in hard on the outside wall. So Elio Castro Neves, after an incredible run and a pretty good shot, as Montoya suggested, at the win here today, has the engine go. And what does that say about DeFerrin's engine? Well, it's all about engines at this point, Paul. We've seen each manufacturer let go. Now, DeFerrin, the last of the Honda contenders. Going racing. Christian Fittipaldi leads him to the line. Moreno under attack by Alex Barron already. At DeFerrin that you saw sitting back there in fourth place. He needs it. There's DeFerrin then Casey Mears. And look back, there is Fernandez. He knows certainly that his may in fact be vulnerable. Everybody comes through the area in front of the start-finish line. And it stays green. No, now it goes yellow. Barron gets it off the track right at the end of the pit road. And I've got to tell you, as Fernandez came across the line right behind that, he was on his brake so hard that they were glowing bright red across the line. The front brakes were just simply glowing. It was plainly... John, hopefully he'll be able to talk to him in a second. We're going to... I want to show you this again with Fernandez because as they like this start, the green flag comes out. Christian Fittipaldi across the line, followed by Moreno. Alex Tagliani takes a very close look at DeFerrin at the same time, trying for a move on Fernandez. No, it does not happen. Now we saw Fernandez get around Casey Mears here as they came by, but I've got to believe Adrian Fernandez is just hanging on for dear life right now. But what we've seen all day long is when these guys have geared up to go to the front, when they've gone down a gear, gone to full rich, we saw it with Blundell as he just took the lead, Michelle Jourdain Jr., Juan Montoya, we just saw it with Alex Barron. The motors have not been able to stand the stress. And I tell you, these guys now have got everything they have available, their foot to the floor. If we're going to see additional engines go, it's going to happen in the next few laps as we come to the checkered flag. The last thing that DeFerrin needs is to argue with Alex Tagliani over something like third just place. Just not handling well. Joe yeah. DeFerrin has just got to lay back and hold his breath. To add to his left. trouble, Casey Mears just got around Fernandez. Casey Mears now fifth. Two to go. Two to go to the million dollars potentially for Fittipaldi for winning the race. Two to go for his first championship and the million dollars to DeFerrin. We've got a car spinning. A car into the wall. Tagliani. Tagliani. He had an engine let go just before it. It looks like the game may be totally over. Tagliani catches the wall. That was after he got around to Farron. It looks like Christian Fittipaldi is going to score win number two. And Jill DeFerrin is going to take the championship. The yellow and the white flag will come out at the same time. Christian Fittipaldi crosses the line with two miles to go. Alex Tagliani's car after this accident that brought out the yellow and ended the race. Rick DeBrule. Well, the team doesn't have a lot of information. The one thing they were saying is right before it happened, he said, I'm going to win this race. I've got the car. But he also wants to make himself quite clear. And what a wonderful story for Casey Mears, who is going to come home in fourth place in his very first race in the champ car. And as he comes to the line, record number of winners in a season as Christian Fittipaldi takes the win. Oh, what a day. And there is your new champion. There are a lot of people here with good reason to be happy. The one who should be happy with a fifth but will not be happy with the lack of championship is Adrian Fernandez, but there's still plenty to come from him. Still uh, DeFerrin that wins the uh, championship. Christian Fittipaldi, he wins the race. Uh, split up a million dollars. DeFerrin heads over to the winner's circle so he can celebrate officially his championship here. Alex Pagliani was injured in that crash, but they say they're not life-threatening. We'll be back with more. For each and every one of those points, and at the final race of the season, in the final minutes of the season, the final miles, there is how the final standings are in the CART FedEx Championship Series. Finishing second was Roberto Moreno. Here's John. 
There it is. It's official. <laughs> Interesting comment that the million dollars is merely a bonus. And you know what? When we talked to them on Thursday, all of the contenders echoed that. These drivers drive because they love to drive. They want to be one of the best in the world. The money is just an added sweet treat. Now this ties the record also for the fewest number of cars running at the conclusion of a race. It was a day of attrition. It's been a season of surprises and a wonderful season in the CART FedEx Championship Series. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sport. For more, log on to ESPN.com.